Let's talk about a few more ways that we can modify power series. Last time we talked about substitution, but this isn't a substitution here. I just have sine of x, but it's times x squared. Well, thing is, I'm still going to start with my power series for sine of x. So, sine of x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial. Well, what happens if I multiply both sides here by x squared? Well, that x squared will distribute to every term on the inside, so I may as well just move it on the, to the inside. And then I've just got an x to a power times x to a power, so if I just add the powers, I'm done. Two n plus one plus another two gives me x to the two n plus three, and there we have it. Nothing to it. This one is just as easy, but it is harder to see. I think, even though I keep talking about how summations should be written out for all these things, and this one's a lot easier to see if I think about the individual terms. So for sine of x, it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, and so on like that. But then I've got that, and I'm saying minus x and plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Well, all that's going to do then, just looking at it, the x's will cancel, this will cancel, and I'm just left with everything else past there. So really, all this is done, added, subtracting the x and adding the x cubed over 3 factorial, that's canceled out my first two terms in this series. So, the power series for this, it's actually the same exact formula as I had for sine of x. The only thing is, rather than starting from 0, the n equals 0 term canceled out, the n equals 1 term canceled out. So I'm just going to be going from n equals 2 to infinity, and there's my power series. Okay, both of those were pretty straightforward. Second one a little bit harder because you got to understand what's going on with the summation, but everything just kind of fell into place once you understood that. This one's trickier. Certainly, we've got a, this geometric series formula, and that's great, but how are we going to use it to get a cubed in there? Well, let's go ahead, let's start with that. We've got 1 over 1 minus x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Well, I kind of did this a couple of videos back when we were talking about sines and cosines. Let's go ahead and let's take the derivative of both sides here. Okay, if I think about this as being 1 minus x to the negative 1, the first derivative would be negative 1 times 1 minus x to the negative 2. And over here, multiply by the power, so n subtract 1 from the power. Let's do it again. Take the derivative of both sides. Here, I get 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 3.
again, multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. And honestly, we're pretty much there, but there is some cleanup we can do here. So first thing to notice is that this left thing here, 2 times 1 minus x to the negative third, is the thing I'm looking for a power series for. So this is 2 over 1 minus x cubed. Now over here, I mean, this is the basic formula I've got here. And technically it works the way it is. But it is worth noting, what happens when n equals 0? When n equals 0, I just get 0. No real sense in having that in there. And similarly, when n equals 1, I get 0. So I can say this thing starts from n equals 2 to infinity, and it's the same thing. And that's a really common trick to do. In fact, another common trick is to do something we call re-indexing. I can want to go ahead and it's really common to have power series just start from x to the well to have it just be x to the n. So basically what I want to do is every n over here I want to add 2 to. So I've got an n plus 2, n plus 2 minus 1 is an n plus 1, and an x to the n but to do that, since I kind of increased every n by 2 here, I've got to decrease every n here by 2. Honestly, either one of these things is fine. Either one of these things is useful. Either one is correct. Just sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do, that re-indexing can be a useful trick. One more that I want to do here. What if I have cosine of x minus sine of x? Well, we have individual power series for each of these things. And once again, I think it might be easiest to write it out term by term to see what's going on here. So cosine is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial. And I've got a minus, sine of x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and so on like that. Well, let's take this and let's interleave things so that we've got them in ascending order of the powers. So I've got a 1 I'm going to have a minus an x, a minus an x squared over 2 factorial, minus a negative is a plus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus an x to the 4th over 4 factorial, minus an x to the 5th over 5 factorial, minus an x to the 6th over 6 factorial, I'll get a plus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, and so on like that. For the most part, this is easy to see. Powers of x are just going up one at a time. The factorial on the bottom always matches the power of x. The only tricky thing then is how do I get this neg positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative. It's like an alternating series, but it alternates two at a time. Well, I'm going to have to kind of cut this thing short, but you should double check this and see it yourself. To get that thing, the easy part is we've got x to the n over n factorial for all values of n from 0 to infinity. 
The hard part is to get that positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, on like that, and check that it works, but negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 over 2 power does that. I wouldn't worry too much about this trick, but I do think that you should check and see how that works that you get that pattern of positives and negatives.